So hello, everybody. Welcome to the speech about our experience in mechanizing the GKL semantics of Coq. My name is Semyon Panenkov, and I have been working together with Anton Podkapayev and Semyon Grigoriev. So let's get started. Uh, GraphQL language uh, is a new language which is currently undergoing standardization process. Uh, however, getting standardizing correctly is hard. Uh, the resulting standard may have something specified incorrectly. It can contain mistakes or have something under specified. Uh, in other words, uh, it's not really clear what have been meant and how to implement it. Uh, the standard allows too much space. And all of these issues, they make implementing the standard in a graph database hard or nearly impossible if you have something contradictory in your standard. Um, and there are some options how to fix this. Uh, the first solution is to mathematically formalize the standard. In other words, you represent graph, uh, you represent your language constructs as mathematical objects and reason about them formally and rigorously. However, if you do this on paper, this is still prone to errors and maybe notorious. And this can be even hard to imagine for big real real world systems like GKL. So the next step, the next uh, option is to mechanize the formalization in some kind of proof assistant, for example, in a clock proof assistant, which we used in this project and which is basically a programming language that allows for uh, defining and reasoning about programs. Uh, it may, it, its main advantage is that you have machine checked proofs that those proofs are automatically checked. And if they are incorrect, the system signals you about that. And you can apply automation to those proofs to uh, get rid of notorious parts and lighten the burden of researchers. Uh, let's have a look what has been done in industry so far. Uh, Regarding GKLA and formalization, there has been a paper, A Semantics of GKL by Olaf Mora, that presented a mathematical formalization of some subset of uh, GKL. Uh, we used this paper as a reference in our project. However, this attempt is on paper and it contains some minor errors, which we found during our work. Um, and we wanted to to avoid this, in the realm of another query language well known, which is SQL, there has been an attempt to mathematically formalize some subset of standard and mechanize this formalization in Coq. Uh, and there has been an attempt to write a verified relational database system, uh, which, which is great. Uh, their experience has shown that though many challenges remain, uh, writing fully verified system software in Coq is within reach. Uh, so our project seems to be feasible and let, let us state our goal. We want to mechanize the core subset of GKL, which we define what, is, what, the, what the core subset is and capture the key implementation details of two reference databases now for J and Radius Graph uh, to show that our uh, so that our specification uh, is realistic and can be used to prove things about real projects. Uh, let's go. Let's go over which subset we have chosen. Uh, we have formalized really, really simple read queries, which consist of a match clause, uh, which specifies a path pattern and the return clause, the simplest form of return clause, which, which just returns everything. And our path patterns, they allow you to specify names, um, labels, and properties. Uh, you can you cannot specify more than one label, more than one label, but all of these, all of these things are, are optional, as in GKL and Cypher. Okay, so we all know that if you omit a name for a vertex or edge pattern. For example, in this example, we have omitted a name for an edge pattern. 
Uh, then there is the resulting table that represents all the paths that match this pattern. Uh, it won't contain the column for this edge pattern. But the absence of name is not really convenient. You may need to refer to this edge pattern during internal computations. And therefore, in our specification, uh, therefore, databases perform pattern normalization. Uh, in our case, this means that if you do not specify an explicit name, uh, the implicit name is being generated by the database. And in our specification, we assume that all vertex and edge patterns, they have names, but some of them may be marked as implicit. So we assume that the, the queries we receive have already been normalized, and we reason in abstract syntax uh, about, about, we reason about queries in abstract syntax, not contrary syntax. Uh, if you take into account the declarative nature of the GQL, which implies that patterns only, uh, that, that implies that queries only specify what data is required, but not how to fetch it, and the database has to figure it out, what real databases do is that they first translate your queries into an intermediate representation called execution plan, and then execute this execution plan. An execution plan is a sequence of, is basically a sequence of operations that need to be performed in order to evaluate the query. Uh, the execution starts from the leaf operation, which produces a table to begin with. Subsequent operations take this table and transform it by adding, removing, or modifying, modifying records. And the resulting table is the result of uh, the query. Uh, taking everything into account, uh, we have come with the following big picture of our project. We have two specifications, the specification of GQL uh, of our core subset and the specification of execution plans. Between those two specifications, there is a query evaluation, uh, which, as we have already discussed, uh, is basically translation algorithms from queries to execution plans. This implementation, it satisfies the specification of GQL. Uh, in other words, that uh, evaluation behaves as expected, as been described. Um, but it relies on specification execution plans. It expects that um, the thing that evaluates the execution plans, it evaluates it as has been specified. And we have chosen to do denotational semantics uh, in our specifications. In other words, we specify which properties uh, the query evaluation and the execution plan evaluation must satisfy. What, which properties the results of this evaluation uh, must satisfy. And this allowed us to separate the implementation from specification. Uh, in this case, you can therefore reuse uh, the specification of the language in many different projects, uh, leaving away all of the other parts. And in this big picture, you can see another block of implementation, another implementation. This is implementation of execution plan operations. Uh, it must satisfy the specification of execution plans. And for most of the operations we have chosen, uh, their implementation was quite trivial, except for one operation that is specific to radius graph. Um, and this is due to how Redis graph optimized the query evaluation using linear algebra. Basically, it takes a path pattern and splits it to several pattern slices, uh, at least we call them this way, and translates each pattern slice into a separate matrix expression. It then evaluates those matrix expressions and traverses the resulting matrices. It then combines the results into a single table. Um, yeah, and we wanted to capture this implementation detail in our in, in, in our project. Uh, so yeah, this part that was mainly trivial also contains a lot of interesting stuff and proves uh, that our specification is realistic enough it can be used 
to uh, reason about interesting things. So the results, uh, we have mechanized the specification of the core subset, uh, which we have chosen ourselves. Uh, we have mechanized the specification of the execution plan, uh, including uh, all of the operations that are enough to evaluate our queries. We have implemented proved the correctness of the translation of the queries. Uh, in this case, as we have already discussed, correctness means that according to the specification of the execution plan, so uh, the evaluation relies on this specification, the evaluation of translated queries satisfies the specification of GQL. And we have provided an example implementation of the execution plan evaluation, including the operation which uses matrices. However, there are some limitations in our work. Uh, the main one is that uh, we interpret tables as sets of records. Therefore, we don't account for order or number of repetitions of records. And as you can see on the slide, these two tables are considered the same. This implies practically that we cannot formalize uh, keywords and aggregating functions like ordered by distinct and count because it doesn't because the result after applying those operations it doesn't differ formally from not applying them and there is a practical impl implication of that we cannot show some things uh, for example there there has been a bug uh, in the radius graph I quoted a word bug because whether it is bug depends on the specification. At least this was a strange behavior. And if you, what the bug is, if you run those two queries, which differ only in whether you specify explicitly the name from the intermediate vertex uh, pattern or not, you get different results. Uh, intuitively, the answers for those queries shouldn't differ. Uh, but what is going on? is that because radius graph used internally matrices that didn't account for number of paths, they, did, they only accounted for uh, whether the path is present or not, the resulting table for uh, path pattern looked like as though you have applied distinct operations. So it contained unique records. And if, if you run those queries on a graph uh, on the bottom of the slide, you see that there are two paths that match that pattern, but if you only ask for the first and the last node, they will be the same. Therefore, if you apply distinct operator, uh, the answer for the first query is one and the answer for the second query is two. We believe that this can be fixed if you use matrices that account for the number of paths. And as I have recently checked, uh, Redis graph seems to have fixed this problem. But we cannot show formally that those problems can be avoided. So yeah, in our future plans, one of the first of our fusion plans is to constrain the order and number of repetitions so that we can prove that this behavior can be fixed. And we also want to expand the cover subset of GQL, add new features, add new keywords, and make the framework more extensible so that our, our mechanization is in sync with the updates in the standard. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready for your questions. All right, thank you. Um, are there any questions from the audience here? Okay. Um, my suspicion is that people have questions about the lunch uh, in particular. So thank you, Samuel, for delivering this talk. And uh, this concludes the second session of the TUC meeting and we shall reconvene at half past one. <laughs>